Hey, I'm Kerwin Frost, and are you sitting at the couch watching interviews? Ever thought about starting your own business? <laughs> That's a crazy idea. <laughs> well, you can very easily on Shopify, respectfully. Taxi? To the interview with clown shoes on his feet, we want Kerwin is a man, he's going for the gold, he's gonna get the win. And this is Kerwin Show! Are you ready? Hey, I'm Kerwin Frost, and on this episode of Kerwin Frost Talks, we're speaking to an icon, the most interesting man in the world, Jerry Lorenzo! <laughs> Oh my, I was not ready for that, dude. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's uh, it's like my Tourette's uh, tick. I just, it, it makes me snap into it. Um, uh, um, thanks for having me on your plane. Um, so, <laughs> so much to talk about. This is crazy. This is like, yeah, I feel like there's been so much time in the making. Um, yeah, how you been? I've been super good, dude. I've been good, man. I'm, um... Coming out of the pandemic, home for a year, not traveling. I've got to like spend a lot of time with my family and yeah. wife and kids, and um, just really enjoying this new perspective from from that crazy shift the world went through. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, man, just kind of reframed, like you know, kind of how we were talking off camera, just like yeah. how we're approaching everything. Yeah. Is 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 being looked at through a new a new perspective, a new prism, and new um, I'm enjoying that new lens, yeah. Yeah, dang. So I've been good, man. It's crazy. But yeah, what about you, man? I'm like thinking about a million different things, uh, but. Oh yeah, I, sh I shouldn't ask questions, right? Like. No, 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 I like that. No, 100% <laughs> have been going through those exact same things. I feel like I have like a tougher time like acknowledging them and just kind of like looking at everything like as like a ongoing chaos. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this entire past year has been insane. And, and yeah. yeah, it's weird. I feel like there's like this, uh, this shift where it's like you either like keep focusing on like what you, yeah, how do you, how do you stay in tune with what's going on while like focusing so hard on your work? Yeah. And what's important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you? How do I? Yeah. Um, I think honestly, man, like kind of what I was saying, I think, I think the pandemic kind of forced you to put everything into perspective. And I think once you have a vision and perspective for your life, I think it's easy for things to fall into their yeah. respective places yeah. and where they fit into that vision. Yeah. And I think um, I just feel super clear about the vision that I have for the brand um, and that vision in and of itself in and of itself uh, makes it really easy to make decisions. That is true. Do you believe there's a balance? Like, do you ever like, like is there a turn on, turn off button for Jerry Lorenzo? Like, or are you just like, you 100% of the time? Like, cause anytime I talk to you, you're kind of like, it's weird. I, I feel like you've seen me at kind of every stage that I've gone through in my entire life. Like you've seen the growth. Yeah. Uh, but also just like my, like, me entering adulthood, you yeah. know what I mean? You've kind of known me since I was a kid. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, but for me, there's kind of no turn off button. I'm kind of like the same person. Exactly. As anxious and as like over the top all the time. And I think that's the best. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I think that's thank the you. best, man. And, and um, you know, my goal was how, how, do, how am I like 100% of the time the same Jerry, yeah. Jerry Lorenzo? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that, I don't have to change when I get home, or yeah. I don't have to be someone different when I'm at work, yep. or... That's one of the first things you kind of go through, I feel like maybe, especially being a family man, because it's just like, how much do I separate? How much, yeah, what's yeah. your thought process to do that? Uh, my thought process was initially, I tried to keep everything kind of separate. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, um, I was approaching things with 
a different level of integrity or um, a different character. Yeah. And it's not, not only like what I was touching at home and my work and my friend and my with my friends and my social life, yeah. um, they were inconsistent. Yeah. And so, um, and that inconsistency in and of itself is like a heavy weight to yeah. have to turn off and on these different characters. Yep. And so, like you said, like I've just been trying to be the same person like 100% of the time. Yeah. So that if you hit me up like, yo, we're gonna do this interview, I don't have to prepare. Like, yeah, yeah. I, who I am is you are who, who I you am. are. Yep, yep. And so um, it 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 relieves me of the preparation. It relieves me of um, that off and on switch. Obviously, there's yeah. times when you know we need to be on for other reasons. If we're you know um, in a boardroom, exactly. I was gonna wherever. say if we're like you know meeting, talking to talking to Adidas yep. or like whatever yep. that may be. It comes from the same spirit, but the level of onness is maybe higher, but yeah. um, who I am at the end of the day, you know, I've been striving to just kind of be the same Jerry all the time. That's true. It's really interesting because you kind of, you, you started Fear of God like later in your life. Yep. Uh, which is amazing because so many, like, I don't know, I've been thrown into this shit maybe like too young. You know what I mean? It was just like, not too young, I wouldn't say. It just came in very like. It's kind of it's become like a heavy part of my life very early. Yeah. You know what I mean? But for you, you kind of were able to like live on to a point to where it's like, I'm ready. You know what I mean? I feel like, yeah, at like 35, you were just able to like yep. just jump. So what was that like? Because I feel like my perspective of it is like, it's just kind of become part of my shit. Like, but not to a point where I was able to like separate anything. It was like, I was kind of like a kid, and high school dropped out, like wandering New York and then ended up in this and yeah, and so forth. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think for me, um, you know, what, what appears to be like a like a late career choice at like in my early thirties, yeah. you know, early to mid thirties, um, um, is really the product of like my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I, yeah. I, I, I worked retail my entire life, all, Damn. all through um, college and, and grad school and getting an MBA, thinking I was going to like sports marketing and went to work for the Dodgers for an office. And on the weekends, I still worked retail. And mm -hmm. um, uh, I had this um, uh, feeling that I needed to do something in sports because I came from a, a, a sports family. family. But my uh, innate passion was within clothing. Right. And um, so these know, ideas were like just like you had these ideas already. I didn't have the ideas for a clothing line. OK. But I had the passion for what am I putting on every day? Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, and the way that I got dressed every day. I didn't know this at the time, but when I started the brand, it was informed by my life prior to starting the brand and yeah. so um what appears like a late start in the industry is really informed by everything that i've done until this point you yeah know, from, from throwing parties in l.a well it's an amazing thing I, I i i think it's it's cool when you're able to kind of a lot of people would just take that jump like very fast you know what i mean you kind of really took your time to like take it all in and say well this is what it is you know what i mean this is what i'm about to put myself through you know, to go through, do you know what, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't approach it like that. Right. I, I, I approached it like, hey, I'm throwing parties in the club. I just had a baby. I need to find a way to stop promoting and get out of here. Yeah. Um, and everyone coming to the club has has their own brand. It was like Nick Diamond and Mega Black Skill, the Cats from Supreme. Wow. The Hunters, all this like. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about that time because I, I, I don't. This no, was I like I wasn't around uh, for that. Yeah, two thousand like seven, eight, wow, nine, this is ten. Like pre social media. Yeah, like when I was just throwing parties in LA. Right, and, right. Um everyone coming to the party spending money had their own brand. Yeah. And you know, narcissistically I was like, Man, like if I can dress better than these cats, I should be able to figure this out too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um at the time I had, you know, uh, my girl was pregnant, I had a son, and I was like, dude, I need like an honorable job. Like I yeah. can't be out five nights a week, coming home, like right, wasted, right. Yeah. and um, trying to be a father at the same time. Yeah. And so I really saw clothing as a way out of the nightlife. And so um, started the brand um, without 
knowing how to do anything. So I came downtown and figured out how to make a pattern, how to make a t-shirt, how to make a long tee, you know, how to make a, a short sleeve raw edge. I'm still doing the raw edges on a, on a hoodie. Um, and, you know, I learned the process on my own, you know, but was driven by my peers around me that I was friends with that had their own brands um, that it just seemed possible. And I had this conviction of my point of view was missing from the marketplace. And I didn't realize till years later that that conviction came from all those years of just like working retail or all those years of like, mm. you know, being an outsider and getting dressed in a way that would allow me to, you know, yeah. enter certain rooms. Yeah. And so um, I think early on, earlier on, too, in this industry, you probably had to like worry about that more kind of being perceived outside of the box or like talking to like a, walking into those rooms. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, being black in America, I'm I was, I'm always worried about that anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We're like born with that defense mechanism. Born with mechanism. that, exactly. Like, like armor that we're putting on to yep. just allow us to like operate like the rest of the normal people and the, or people that are perceived to just be normal. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we want to be perceived to be the same way too, right? Yeah, so for sure. How are, we, how are we dressing that like potentially disarms people of like their preconceived notions of us? When, when you were... Um when you were doing the parties and and, uh, and promoting and everything, what was that world like? Like, what, like, yeah. Uh, you know what? It's, this is like pre-Instagram. Like, pre yeah, it was at the time when we started, man. It was like in Hollywood, there was like white A-list celebrity nights, and then there were like your hood nights. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Right, so it was right. like techno, or it was like super hood, and there was like nothing in between. You know, all of my friends are either brand owners, you know, athletes, actors, wow. designers of all different races and backgrounds. Yeah. But, you know, we listened to kind of the same stuff and the music kind of like connected, everybody. Co connected everyone. And we wanted to like define a space where we could all go and kick it. Yeah. That yeah. wasn't so segregated. Yeah, and so yeah. in the same way that I feel like I approach nightlife is kind of the same way that I feel like I approach clothing. Yeah. And tried to throw parties in a way. And we were up to like five nights a week. Wow where the parties were just so dope that I didn't have to ask you to come because I didn't want to feel like you were doing me a favor yeah, by Yeah, yeah, by pulling up, yeah. I just wanted to make the dopest spot where you felt like you needed to you be needed there. You needed to be there. And so that's the same kind of thought process that goes into Fear of God. It's kind of like, I just want to make the dopest stuff that yeah. you want to be a part of, but I don't want to have to, like, you know, text you and beg you and promote yeah. and, like, you know, 100%. I, I've always been one that believes in the product. Um, and the spirit behind the product that like will bring the people to it. Dang, that's true. So I found out that you you worked on a, a Kanye's APC collection. Yeah, it was and like, that was kind of like your first. Was that like your first like big moment? Was that like? Um, yeah, I had launched Fear of God, and we just dropped like our lookbook and this video, and um, um, shortly after that. Virgil and Ivan came by my apartment and um, ironically he was launching Pyrex at the same time. Oh wow. And I was like, yo, I'm launching this brand. And I showed him like these flannels with the zippers on it and these long tees. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's like, yo, I need these long tees. And he like, you know, just took them out of my garage. Wow. Um, fast forward a couple weeks after that, he had given a couple to Ye. Ye was doing a show in Atlantic City. Um, it was like right around New Year's. And I got a random call from Virgil, like, yo, can you be in Atlantic City in tomorrow? Yeah. And I was like, uh, he's like, Ye wants to see the Spirit of God collection that you did. Wow. And I was like, like yes. like, at the time, the greatest. Oh, yeah, at that well, time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, Don and Ivan and Virgil, we were all cool just through, like, my Chicago days and then, you oh, know, wow, throwing parties in L.A. And, um, but I had never really connected with Ye, so I was mm. like, hell yeah, I wanna like, you know, I wanna, yeah. number one, just meet the dude and yeah, just yeah. like chop it up. Yeah. Um, but I got to Atlantic City, had everything in my duffel bag, had my little video lookbook, played it for him and gave him like the point of view behind the collection. But before I could get through explaining everything, he's like holding up this t-shirt and he's like, man, I could see all the thought that went into this. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it was at that moment that, you know, we, I knew that we saw things the same way. Wow. And I felt that from looking at him from afar, yeah. obviously. Um, but then when we connected personally, I was like, yeah, we kind of see things the same way. And he's yeah. like, well, what are you doing in a couple of weeks? And I was like, uh, be in LA. He's like, yeah. 
He's like, you want to come to Paris? I'm, I'm, we're getting ready to do this APC collection. Oh my God. And he's like, I'd love for you to work on it with me. Yeah. And I was like, uh, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> and then um, that's how that happened. So I was like learning, mind you, I'm like self-taught. So I'm learning how to like yeah. do my own stuff and then I'm simultaneously trying to help him with his stuff. And so- But what, really, was there something about like just that initial belief that just made you feel like you can go like 10 times harder? You know what I mean? Because I feel like during that time you probably didn't even have a a second to zoom out on it. It was just like, oh, all right, this is what I'm doing. You know, it's, it's that's a good question because I, I had this conviction of what I was doing. I knew it was missing from the marketplace. Yeah. And I didn't know where that conviction was coming from. Yeah. I just knew people were going to want a basic ass long tee that they could right. wear with everything. Right, right. That wasn't like AAA or that wasn't like Rick Owens, super mm -hmm. slim and like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, feminine fabric yeah, and material. Same. And I, I knew they were looking for this like plane to be landed perfectly in this like t-shirt thing, right? And right. so um, I had this weird conviction, I didn't know where it came from, but then this individual that I had looked up to so highly yeah, yeah. felt the same way about it. And yeah, it did just kind of like give me that confidence right. that, you know, what I'm proposing might be missing. Right. Yeah. You always, you always wonder what that is because I feel like not many people get moments like that, but it's, I, I feel like it's almost like, I don't know, like um, like a lot of things I'll do, like I don't think I can do at all. And then my wife will be like, just kind of like on me, like, no, no, you, you're gonna do it. And like pushes me on the stage, you know what I mean? But like, yeah. that it almost works in that way sometimes. Yep. And that happens a lot too, just being a dad. It's like, yeah, it's like. Yeah, there's no book, there's no. Yeah, you have to, I mean, none of us can make it on our own. No. No one, no one makes it on their own. And Absolutely it's just like. Not. I remember my son, um, I was tossing like uh, pop, not pop flies, we were doing toss ups and we were playing with a stick and these really small balls and he kept missing. Yeah. And he started breaking down crying. And I was like, I could either stop or believe what I know that's in him and keep tossing the balls. Yeah. And he was bawling, but I was like, dude, you're gonna hit it, let's go, let's yeah. go, you're not quitting. And he finally just started hitting. And then, wow. and then to see that confidence arise. Yeah, in him, yeah. But, it was because I saw what was in him, and sometimes you need someone to see what's in you yep. to have the strength to pull it out of yourself. And it's so, crazy. Um, yeah, him him seeing that in me, I think, um, was a seed planet that. Because um, it was a big deal at the time. I think that was like at the height of like raw denim. I remember like that being like a huge thing, and then yep. like the Ben Trill shirt also being in that collection. It was like a moment. Yeah, there was like a lot that was happening at the time. It was also the, the, the first time people really geeked out over like a hundred dollar like white tee. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that being like insane because it was like, like Alexander Wang was able to do it, but like, damn. But like, but, but exactly, yeah, but you're right though. But how is someone from street culture yeah. doing not a graphic tee? Yeah. That is trying, priced like, beyond a graphic tee yeah. with no graphic. You know what I mean? Crazy. And it's all about the shape, proportion, yeah. drape that oh that fits within yeah, you know, how I'm how I'm dressing. And so um yeah, man, I think I think we're still seeing the fruits of that confidence today. Crazy. Yeah, man. Going going from that, um when did you like like fully net out like kind of the aesthetic of fear of God? Um I think it's just been, I don't wanna say, it's never perfect, but I think it's just been like, I think my point of view has finally, or my resources have caught up to like my point of view. Right, right, right. You know, it's like I've been trying to like propose something with like limited resources downtown yeah. LA and, um, and not having, you know, uh, luxury factories in Italy that can make suiting or knitwear at the yeah. level that I want. And I feel now that we have these relationships from a factory standpoint yeah. um, and a development standpoint um, that I feel like it's more and more clear what it is that we're um, proposing and presenting to the world. That's true. Could you tell me about like some of the struggles you've gone through like producing and manufacturing clothes? Because I feel like that's a big thing people don't talk about. And even when I had like Spaghetti Boys and we were like looking for like, you know, the perfect fulfillment center, I think you were the only person that came through and connected us with like just a good match of doing it. But there's so many, I guess like uh, like that how to make it in America moment where like 
all your shit's like burning in a truck basically. Um, yeah, tell me about that. Or like a time that you kind of went through like a crazy, oh shit, like what am I gonna do? I think the oh shit, what I'm gonna do is consistent. It never stops. Yeah, it, it, it never stops as a business owner because you're consistently hitting levels and swimming in an ocean that you've never swam in before. Yeah. And so at the at the rate that we're growing and as we're growing these different pillars from essentials and athletics now with Adidas and our main line, um, I'm constantly like, oh shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but that started off in the very beginning when I was trying to find production managers to help. Yeah. You know, and um, lost fourteen to twenty thousand dollars. Not really lost, but just had it stolen. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just people realizing that, oh, you wait, wait, what happened in that situation? Man, I just had like this production manager that realized that I was gonna keep throwing money at this thing yeah. until I had no more money. Right. So he was like, Let me give him every option. Yeah, oh you need to buy this fabric early yeah. and you need to do this and yeah. you need to do that. And then um, you know, I'm like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars deep and he's kind of late on a lot of things I've been asking for. I was like, yeah, let me just get all my fabrics and assets back that I spent money on. Yeah. And come to find out there were no assets. There was no, no fabrics oh, and wow. none of those things existed. Wow, that's fucking crazy. Um, and it was a good lesson to learn to like, you know, you, you, you have to be on top of every part of your business. Yeah. Um, and but also as a creative, it's almost impossible. It's, it's a yeah. constant bal yeah. balance of trying to be CEO and creative. How do you stay passionate about it? Like, I, I think with Spaghetti was I w wasn't able to look at, like, T-shirts after, like, after it. You know what I mean? I just wasn't. I was, like, sick of it. Yeah. I think what keeps me passionate is I know that that my perspective and the way that I see things doesn't change, but my life is changing. Yeah. And as my life is changing, I have new needs for my life. Yep. You know, it's like we're launching kids in a couple of months. It's because I have kids. Wow. You know what I mean? And so yeah. I have a passion now to design into that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting older, and so I've got parent teacher conferences. And so it, I really need to figure this suiting thing out because I'm yeah. tired of looking like a right. 20 year old going yeah. to talk to my kids' teachers. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I think life is like is directing the products that we're putting out, but our perspective of like um, being appropriate sophisticated, elegant, yeah. um, hasn't changed. Yeah. But I think as my life change, changes and um, I start to touch and dabble in different areas, um, that's, I think, is what's going to keep it fresh and keep the, um, kind of keep the drive, like, alive, so to speak. Right. With Essentials, it's really crazy because no one ever kind of has been able to do the Paxson move but then completely like just blow it out of the water and like not let it, like it almost ele elevated your brand. Yeah. Which is crazy. I don't think I've seen anyone successfully do that. That's like probably the biggest like fear when doing a deal like that. Um, yeah. But it's crazy now you'll go to like Sandy Alley or like a cra you'll see fake essentials in these stores now. Yeah. Is that a crazy feeling for you? Like how, what, yeah, how do you feel about it? Uh, I mean, definitely was concerned, like, in the beginning, like, how are we going to navigate being um, in the mall? Yeah. And, and fighting for the respect that we're sitting in the middle of Barney's next to Givenchy and yeah. Prada and whoever else. Yeah. Like, how are we going to fight and say our, our point of view is valid in the mall and yep. at accessibility but and at the, at the highest at level? At the highest level. And um, that, that just took a lot of, like you know, honest reflection re right. reflection throughout that process. And I think that was the big moment where I realized, like, because it started off, it was FOG, it was fog. Yeah, which was I remember like, that. Yeah, and it was like a derivative of Fear of God. Yeah, it was like the first drop. Yeah, and I was like, you know what, this feels dishonest. It feels, yeah. like, it's a, it feels like you're offering someone a takedown of the real thing. Yeah. And so when we changed it, the name to Essentials and the proposition as far as, like, hey, these are just the best basics for your closet that go with anything mm -hmm. from, like, a three thousand dollar overcoat to your beat up sneakers, like yeah. this is like the most sophisticated and like appropriate like proposition for that solution. Yeah, um, that's what we were chasing. This honesty of that product. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? How do mm -hmm. we land it there? And I think now, I think, I guess to answer your question, how did we survive that? I think is because we constantly made sure that what we were saying was honest and authentic. Yeah, I think it was in line with the brand. 
Yeah, and it was in line. It was in line with my heart's intention of like. How do you feel now seeing like the the bootlegs? Oh, I don't I don't care. The bootlegs don't bother me. I mean, right. I, I think the bootlegs bothered me more when Fear of God was first starting and we had no branding on anything and our you know whether it was our our, our jeans with the the zip or the the bombers or like the track pants at the time that were knocked off and no one knew that they weren't ours. Yeah. Um, but now it's like almost a term of endearment. It's kind of like a. Yeah, it's, it's just kind of like I've, I've realized, you know, eight to ten years in that, like, I have more ideas and I'm going to have more ideas. That's fire. And um, if I try and hold on to those old things that are getting knocked off and take ownership of it is, is when I can kind of lose perspective of kind of like what I'm doing. Yeah. And there's this, like, C.S. Lewis quote that I love is, like, nothing is truly yours until you give it away. Mm. And so it's like... It's like, yeah, you can make dope track pants, but until you're knocked off and like in every, like, yep. it's really never your idea. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's almost like reinforces that because it's been given away and there's, you know what I mean? Yeah. That um, the ownership is now yours in a weird way. Damn. So I, I guess that's kind of like, that's a part of like this reframing I've been working on is like, because, yeah. you know, there's two, I could be super pissed about it and let it eat me up, but if I just reframe it, it's can, a complete different outtake. It's a complete ending. It, it, it changes it all. And it won't eat me up, and it yeah. won't keep me from, like, doing the things that I got to keep doing. With the first couple of seasons, you went through that? Yeah, I, I constantly went through that. Oh, wow. I constantly went through that. and I feel like because once you see it, you start seeing it everywhere. Yeah, you start seeing it everywhere. And, and then with the Internet and social media... There's no stopping it. You have, you have the wrong... Sometimes you may have the wrong group of individuals championing right. your idea that you weren't necessarily yeah. targeting. And, and yeah. not to say that anyone is wrong to wear fear of God at all, right. but like obviously you have a, a person in mind with a target. Um, and then there are some individuals that have access to that um, that maybe, um, how do I say this without hurting anyone's feelings? I love everyone, but it's like, you know, maybe their aesthetic isn't what you were thinking in your mind. Yep. And so you have to get used to the fact that, you know, people are buying into this. They're going to make it theirs their own way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I just had to get confident, be confident in who I am and yeah. what I'm putting into the world and stop worrying about who's wearing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. like the reality is God has me here to serve everybody, which is Fuck. our heart's intention of, of essentials and accessibility. I've got more family that shops in the mall that can go to you know, luxury stores. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, um, it's just constant growth, you know? Yeah. And, and being open to the growth. And um, I think, I think with it happen, happening to me later in life, I'm able to maybe have that perspective a little easier where maybe if this happened to me 10 years earlier, I may not be, I may not have maturated in a way to have been able to deal with it properly. Yeah, because now you can just deal with it. Yeah. Dang. Could you tell me about um, when uh, when you and uh, Justin Bieber worked together? Because I feel like that was a also a huge uh, shift in, in uh, streetwear at the time. That was like crazy to see. Like, yeah, it was like the. It was a, I think that was the first time merch was like sitting in Barney's. And I think that was that's a good question because that's actually also like when I realized like who's wearing what you're making doesn't matter. And yeah. So, um, I had just kind of, me and Kanye had kind of parted ways and it was kind of kind of weird at the time. Yeah. Um, was no longer like in the cool crew and was kind of right. like on the side and Justin approached me about doing his merch. And at the time I had been playing Purpose. Like I've been yeah. playing the album. I was like, wow. yo, this is actually a dope album. Record, and yeah. I can see what he's trying to do with his life and trying to be better. And although he's not known for his fashion, I saw it as an opportunity to bring a point of view where I could help try and elevate the aesthetics of the merch and what he's wearing on stage to where I felt like visually or uh, sonically his music was. Yeah. And so even though he wasn't like known for his fashion at the time and maybe it could have like really not killed the brand, but yeah. it perceived a certain way. Yeah. Um, but again, I think because we approach it with and authenticity, like, well, this is about the message of purpose. You know what I mean? So cool. Um, and then just really being able to leverage it, all I learned with Ye. Yeah. You know, on, on the Yeezus tour when, um, you know, I was responsible for the merch there and the activations there and the pop-ups that we ran. And, yeah. Um, 
you know, thanks to Ye and been able to take that playbook and like, yo, yeah. I, know, I know this can work. You, you had said when, when you had stopped working with Ye, there was this whole like, kind of I'm not part of the cool club uh, thing, but um, it was crazy that you were able to kind of just like immediately take a shift and like roll with it. What was that? What were those feelings like? Like, yeah, because I had to like. Because I, I had kind of hit a place where it was like, I just need to do what's what I feel matters. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? And if you move your heart, you can't fail. Yeah. So you whatever. You can't fail at all. So like whatever people think, I can wear that. Yeah. Because I know that I moved from a place of intentionality and honesty. There's no way it could go wrong. And if it does go and wrong. And it didn't. If it does go wrong, I can still sleep at night because I felt like it was honest to who I am. Yeah. And so that was actually a good turning point in my life to say, hey, let's stop worrying about the only way to direct culture is to not worry about what they're doing, but is to be ahead of it. Mm. You know, if I'm so worried about what culture is doing and what they're reacting to, then I'm just going to have a You're going to be in the same race with them. I'm going to be in the same race. Yep. And it allowed me to separate at a, at a with a platform that I didn't realize was as big as Justin's platform. Yeah. And so... But um, it, and it also comes from a tough place because I... I and I, I imagine like working within the the Avenger squad, you know what I mean? And kind of like going away from that has to be like, oh wait, is this gonna, you, like you kind of go crazy a little bit because it's just like your perception of reality and even what you've seen, it's, it's just fucked up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was crazy you were able to do that. I, yeah, I remember it, it, it was like a, that was a huge moment. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was beautiful. And, and you were able to completely shift his image. You kind of like, like, uh, like JT with the Justified album, uh, style wise. Yeah, I did like what I never, Pharrell I did never, for, for I, Justin Timberlake. I never made that correlation. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, how much do you think like doing that kind of shifted? Because uh, how Fear God was looked at, and not in a bad way, but I feel like. I think it expanded us. Yeah, I think I, I, that's I think what I, yeah. I think it expanded us, and I think it opened us up, and it gave us confidence to like play our game. Yeah, you know, it's like every you know, I come from a sports family. It's like you you get too worried about the other team, you're already you you already lost. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's like what game are we playing? Yeah, and you found your own lane. I feel like it. Definitely. And and you know. I actually, I love Justin. I actually think he is, like, once you get to know him, like, he's probably one of the most talented people I ever met. Like, I watched him, like, go from a piano to, like, juggling a soccer ball to, like, hitting threes to, yeah. like, singing and, like, he, right, could, right. he could just do whatever he wants. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So yeah. how how he looks is irrelevant. Like, the dude yeah. is, like, one of the most talented no, people in the, in, in the world. And yeah. um, he's got a heart of gold and, like, um, for him to be kind of where he is today and to like have dealt with everything he did like as a child to get to where he is and still have it together. Saying, yeah, no. <laughs> um, this says a lot about his character, yeah. so. That's a fact. Yeah, that's a crazy correlation that Pharrell and JT. Yeah, true, true. It's, I, I find that really like interesting about you is most people that are able to draw those cultural um, connections yeah. and are interested in what's happening within culture don't have their own individuality because they're so caught up in culture and like you're this weird like unicorn juxtaposition that like you understand like the Einstein level of what's happening within culture yeah. but you're your own man and I think that's one of the things about you that like I've always loved and respected thank you is that um, you are who you are despite your interests yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's no, uh, no separation from it. It's weird, but I also think a lot of people. Well, I, I have a way of looking at things where I, I, so, so much of it is connected. Like even the the streamline of history, and whether it ties in with music or pop culture, or even like, and I, I think a lot of people who we even came up with just kind of, I don't know, there's like these walls that you're supposed to like just look at. Mm -hmm. And this like passageway and the rule book for like what you do look at. And like the essentials, like no pun intended, but like just like 
Yeah. That, yeah, that, I don't know. I based feel like, on based on the rules, that shouldn't have worked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. But it's like once you break down the walls and and could kind of like take inspiration from just seeing like a, like a clip that's part of a movie and then put that in design or I, I don't know it it all ties together if that makes sense in my head. Yeah, it all it, it, yeah it all ties together. Yeah, yeah. and I think. I'm not a like a. I don't really believe like in signs or whatever, but I am a Libra, so I have like this balance, and so I'm like able to kind of like, be creative. Yeah, you have that like, as well. See though, CEO well, yeah. like thing at the same time. It's like I'm creative, but I do have my MBA. I got my master's in yeah. business. Like I push myself through grad school, and so Crazy. like, I have these this like duality, and I think yeah. something about that duality and the way that I can see things allows me to create with intention and also understanding that I've got to provide for like yep. my 40 employees or so. So like, you know. How do you I mean, deal with that? Like managing 40 employees? Uh, great. We just had a team meeting, like our first team meeting, like a year and a half, wow. like, um, you know, this week, uh, Wednesday this week. Yeah. And, um, you know, I got up to talk and just super emotional and, um, cause Was yeah, this in front of the, the billboard? This was, you know, ironic, and, and just how, like, you know, I feel like God's hand is on everything we're doing. So we got the billboard, like, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And then we were looking for just an outdoor space. We were going to go, like, downtown rooftop Soho house, and yeah. we found the spot on Sunset. And it just so happened to be on top of the billboard. <laughs> so it's just, like, the way things are working. So yeah. I'm talking to 40 people that have bought in and believe in what I'm doing yeah. on top of our billboard and just had a little moment of just, like, you 100%. know. 100%. You know, just, like, oh, where... Shit where where I am in the middle of a time of uncertainty for a lot of people yeah. and just a level of gratitude. Tim. This is going good. I thought you were going to come with some questions that were going to have me crying on here just because I've, I've seen some of your stuff. Oh. You like but, to go deep. Like which questions? <laughs> am I not going deep enough? <laughs> this is fun. I'm enjoying this. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, let's go deeper. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> you are like, you know, our yeah. Oprah, you're like, you're like, you know, you want to sit with Kerwin, dude. It's like, damn, thank you. Wow. But is that, that's that's, Oprah Letterman. Who would who would you rather like, or is it neither? Like, who would? I don't know anymore. I don't know. I think it changes with every episode. Uh, but I do appreciate it. I do. Uh, yeah. I, and I want to see more people do it. I I want to see more people help tell stories. You know. Yeah. It's. Something within the scene that I always see is like, I don't know, I grew up like very much a fan of it and then kind of like grew into figuring out everyone kind of has this like very selfish business output on it. That's not like this togetherness or like, yeah. let's keep this pushing for us or who's next, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, yes. It's weird and it's crazy when you figure that out. I feel like I find reasons to like still be in it that are just like, oh, well, I can maybe provide that for like whoever is watching me do it. You know what I mean? Exactly. But I have those moments all the time within them. What was your involvement in season one? Because I, re I remember uh, getting this call, coming to, to get to go to that studio in Soho. Uh, I think when, when Kanye had announced he was gonna do the season one and they were doing like a casting call, it was like, it was like the Willy Wonka moment of like, culture period like everybody was a model that did anything they were they were there they were going to try to get casted for the show yeah uh being the kind of like sore rat that i was you know i knew i had no chance at all to be a part of that but uh i was broken so with zero dollars about to hop the train to go back to harlem and Heron preston calls me and he's like oh hey uh what are you what are you doing like do you want to come pack invites and i was like uh yeah <laughs> let's go like immediately i was wearing a pair of air force ones and then i uh, had this aluminum tape, duct tape the check, and drew three stripes, um, and then and then came up to that studio, saw saw you next to Yay. I think he freaked out immediately when he saw the Air Force One, and then had someone take photos of it for like five minutes, <laughs> and then, but it was like a really tight knit crowd, and when we were sitting, it was like me, Heron, Arthur Carr, and then sometimes Virgil, like the vowels, like packing the jack. Uh, what was it? No, what was yeah, it was the it was jacket, like a, the like a parka, like a, Yeah, it was yeah, the white, the white Tyvex. Yeah, and but that was crazy. It was a very small circle. Yeah. What was your involvement? What was your involvement in that? I was trying to figure it out at the time. <laughs> I'm just like, dude, I just launched 
fear of God. Yeah. And like, why does he have me here? And so <laughs> I'm just like trying to serve yeah. his creative vision the best right. way possible, you right. know, from, I think if I, if, if I'm looking now from like, okay, now, like, why do I have people around? It's like, oh, that's why. It's like, probably like styling, yeah. you know, I, I remember, you know, me and, you know, running Luca through like a hundred looks that day. Wow. <laughs> um, you know, and, you know, I, I think he's a guy that likes individuals around that are going to amplify the best in him. And, and just so take it on, yeah. I like to think that, you know, maybe just being around, I was able to help influence in a small way what, you know, what was happening. But, um, yeah, I would hate to even say I was designing at the time. I had just did Fear of God like two years ago. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. we did APC. And then it was like the, you know... Yeah, yeah, it was the, the the launch of Yeezy back in the day. And are you ever able to zoom out and like see the kind of the the beautifulness of those moments, or do you feel like like yeah? How do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm able to zoom out and understand like how um, how much those moments shaped where I am today. Yeah, um, I think one of the greatest things that I took from him is just like his work ethic, right? And you attention know what I mean? to detail. And just the way that he, you know, pushed himself and yeah. and pushed the team and made the team believe in what what he was doing and yeah. um, it it definitely gave me what I needed post that relationship to, you know, go the extra to to figure out my own thing when there's like so many times when you're you know funding your own dream that there's so many reasons to stop yeah. you know but I think his example of perseverance is something that I took from that. Um, and then I look now and you see like where Matt's at with Givenchy, you see yeah. what Virgil's been able to do, you see what Heron's been able to do and Justin, yeah. um, and, like Nate Brown and like a lot of these cats that were all like just a part of that. And it's like, wow, like time has, time has validated that all these individual point of views yeah. um, were very strong. Yeah. You know, and, and time has validated the fact that, like, what we're doing now individually, um, yes, was um, um, magnified by that opportunity, but but we all have very strong points of views that yeah. can um, stand on their own. Um, and so I look back and super proud that I don't know how I made it, yeah. the, you know, at the cool kids lunch table, but I, I was there for a good, you know three and a half years or so, so it was, it was fun. Fast forward, um, you're not at Adidas. Yep. So, so are you. Yeah, so <laughs> that's true, that is very true. I'm with you, thanks Thanks to you for making that connection. Oh. <laughs> um, when you had that, you know, the fear of God won, um, the packaging was crazy, it came in this beautiful mango box. Yeah. You had that nice, Aluminum yeah. bag. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful shoe. I genuinely love that shoe. Yeah, you looked really, really good, and I think you posted even when you were like on the, like about to sign with Adidas, or, yeah. or you had already. <laughs> I did, and you yeah. still, you still, yeah, I did. You, st you still shared it, and I, I really appreciate you. Doing that shoe that. meant a lot to me when I got that. I was like, wow. I mean, it's just, yeah. I, I, I think throughout your career, you've just like you've never really missed. You've kind of like like stuck to your guns, did it your way, like all the way through, which you can't say for a lot of people. I know you'll say a lot about like, just like the cool kids table and everything. And it's like, I don't know, a lot of times I don't feel like I'm a part of that either. I think like what I'm doing is like this world of things that I created because I wasn't getting offered to do anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And amazing that it worked, but always related to that. Cause I always felt like I was out and in at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was just a side note, but. Yeah, and it's like you find that that's exactly where your strength lies, is the fact that you like don't fit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and it's at like all. nurturing, nurturing really who you really are. Um, what's it, what's the shift like for you? This is like, it's, it's a crazy moment. I mean, yeah. Uh, the Adidas are like, what's, what, what, what point of that question like do you want just me to like, like not that like, many people ever do the switch from Nike to Adidas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can. You were able to do it clean, but also like the way they're kind of like very much like 
going all in. Like you had like the billboard outside of the headquarters. In Port- <laughs> like that was wild. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw that man, and I just immediately felt the responsibility, the opportunity. And it's crazy because I'm older. It's like, you know, like it. Do- had that happened 10 years ago, I would have been like, man, y'all should have sent me a private jet if you was going <laughs> <laughs> But it's like, now I realize the responsibility of like being on the side, you know, yeah. and, and how much they believe in like the way that we see the world from design to business strategy yeah. um, to give us the keys, you know, so to speak, to the basketball category and also the resources to build athletics. Um, but I think, I think it just happened in a divine way. It's like growing up as a kid, Nike was like the aspiration. It was Jordan, it was Agassi, and it was Bo yeah. Jackson and Dion, and it was all these guys that I looked up to and yeah. products that I looked up to. And so the Nike opportunity was really me fulfilling a kid's dream. Yeah. Fast forward to now, you know, early 40s, the Adidas opportunity is like my, I feel like it's a God dream for the future. It is. And so, being responsible for a business and creating and, and honoring what I feel like this vision of the company that God has given me, I have to make the decision on best for what this gift in this company that he's given me. Yeah. And um, in all honesty, the way that Adidas and how I knew Adidas in like the late 80s and early 90s yeah. growing up, Adidas was the sophisticated, elegant, mm-hmm. um, rooted in function, um, aspiration that everyone wanted to be in and that yeah. allowed the individual to be the individual. That's and true. the reality is that's a lot like the perspective of fear of God, yeah. um, even more so than Nike. And if, if I just look at the opportunity from like, you know, the promise of the designs, like when, the, when, this, when Adidas started and when fear of God started, there's probably a similar Like, hey, we're gonna provide honest solutions for people in the most tasteful, elegant way. And I feel like if just at that level, I think that we see things alike. And so, yeah, there's pressure, but I'm more so looking at how great this opportunity is. Yeah, You know what I mean? it's, it's, It's incredible. And I feel like because we're able to speak kind of the same design language, intention language, it, it, it doesn't feel like Nike, and as much as I love Nike and appreciate them for the opportunity, I never felt like I fit there either. No, no, you know, Nike like, is, uh, you it's, know, it's, it's like, it's a cool guy's table, you know? Yeah, those those influencer dinners at Nike, oh, it's yeah. just like, how, I Influencer should, dinners. Like, I'm not, why go am to I a, here? Go to a jog yeah. and then just jump on this plane, go around New York, and we'll just drop you off for no reason. That's yeah, I just, I never felt like I fully, <laughs> fully, and, yeah. and it's, not, it's not a knock, I just no, it's like not. I fit. And so what I'm trying to do with Adidas... Well, I, don't, I don't think I don't think they... The, the amazing thing about Adidas, which I will say, and even with me, someone who has had, like, very little, like, uh, uh, I, w- I would say very little put into, like, fashion design to get, like, an opportunity that I'm getting where I'm able to, like, you know, make any apparel at all, period, next to footwear. Um, it's kind of like an open world. They're just, like, really kind of take it to the moon. And... I feel like with Nike, it's it's very much like you kind of get like one shot on like one shoe, and for most of the time, it is like a you can mess with the already existing silhouette. You broke in the doors for that and said, "I'm getting my own fucking shoe." You know what I mean? But I don't think anyone gets like a real shot to immediately take it to the moon with them, honestly. Yeah, and that was my focus the entire time. Is like. You know, once the shoe dropped, I'm just like, all right, where's the deal for the two? Where's yeah. the deal for the, I want the fear of God too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is fun and all, but I'm not doing this for this. I yeah. want, I'm in it for the long, the long, the long game. You the know long what I mean? And I, and I was under the impression that I just needed to put po- points on the board. And yeah. so I focused on the shoe. I focused on um, execution and, and, and activating and honoring the opportunity with the intention of being there for a super long time. Yeah. And, and um, in, in short, they just saw the future differently. And I think um, when I met with Adidas, I just feel like we saw the future the same way. Yeah. And coming off like the Xenia relationship and some other things that I've done where I feel like I, I had to pull teeth to have a point for oh, the 100%. people. Just have a voice, even though you've done, you feel, or 
yeah, you've done so much that you would think it would be kind of like a telltale, but like it's it's like I had to pull teeth to serve you. Yeah, like, like you brought me here to serve you. Yeah. Like, why are you arguing about a width on a shoulder of a blazer 100%. when that's why I'm here? Like, to, yeah. to, to propose this silhouette. Yep. And so, um, I, I think I had just lost the bandwidth of, like, fighting a company to serve them at that point. Yeah, where yeah. Where I felt like with Adidas, I didn't have that. It was like, okay, yeah, we actually see this. God gave me this vision like years ago, like, hey, you know, these are the three pillars, you know, athletics and performance, essentials, accessibility, and like mainline luxury. And so that whole year when Nike's like, hey, we need you to stay on for a year. We're not sure if we're gonna continue, but we'll talk at the end of the year. What? So I'm living in question for like a year of like, what's gonna happen? It's like, man, did God really show me this three pillar thing? Like, yeah, I, I really, yeah. you know what I mean? And so- There was an entire year of uncertainty? Entire, yeah. That has to affect like how you even give someone a pair of shoes and are excited about it. Or... I mean, that's why I did the whole like Iverson thing. Yeah. And it was like that toe box was in, you know, informed by the question, but that's like a, we, you know, all of our designs are informed by small things, right? Yeah. That was a small piece of it, but I was like, no, I'm gonna tell this story. Yeah. About living in question. Yeah. No matter how many points you're putting on the board, people are still gonna still, doubt, still gonna doubt you. Still. And you know what, dude, you, you have proven that you're a leader and um, and the owner of your own company, mm -hmm. and there's no decision maker at any other company that's mm -hmm. going to uh, redirect your destiny. Yeah. And that was just me saying like, yo, like y'all got me here living in question, I'm gonna call this the question. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it was just like, you know, Damn. like, and so, um, but I say that with all gratitude yeah. and like, had I not had that opportunity, I wouldn't be at Adidas. Yeah. Had they never gave me the open playground to design my own shoe, I wouldn't be where I am now. And so, yeah. um, nothing against Nike, I think. I think you would have, It. I don't think it had to do with, I, I think you eventually would have, you know what I mean? It would have happened. Because it was a path that was kind of set for you. Yeah, I think it was just yeah. like, it was, you know, it was not. It, it would have happened. It's Nas, it was written. Yeah, it was written. Yeah. It was so. written. The, the three pillars on your neck, is, is that? Yeah. That's the Trinity, you know, I think. Cause I had um, thought you got that for Adidas. Yeah, a lot of people do, which is cool. Think what you want. Yeah. I know what it is. Yeah. You know, like, and, and it's, it's exactly that. It's like the revelation that I got that the, even when I went through a year of being uncertain and I really thought that God gave me this vision of three pillars. Yeah. You know, then I was yeah. like, what's happening, God? I thought this Nike thing was going to be the right. performance pillar, right. the third pillar. And when the Adidas opportunity happened and we were able to form that third pillar athletics with the resources provided by that partnership, it was, it was this crazy revelation of, of wow, like the nature of my business, athletics, essentials, and fear of God, and these three different pillars being in relationship and being complete in and of themselves also represents this, the very nature of the God that I believe in. Yeah. You know, the Trinity, God, the Father, and the Son, and their um, unique relationship. And in that relationship is where the magic is birthed. And so for me, again, the fact that this opportunity came from Adidas, whose brand is Three Stripes, it was just more revelatory that this was a God thing. And so yeah. this is, you know, it's the Trinity on my neck. You know, if Adidas is like, you know what? This isn't working, like, I know I know what this is. Yeah, it's still, it's still, it's, it's still, it still was, holds this. It was providential to me as a person that God said, I'm keeping my promise to you, the vision I showed you of these yeah. three pillars through this yeah. brand and their brand represents my very nature by their logo. And I was just like, dang, this is deep. Yeah, that's crazy. This is crazy. And so that's what that represents. And so like, you know, I, I put it on knowing that um, everything that we do here is, uh, has, a, has an expiration date. You know, but to me, this is this is an eternal mark that like transcends time, and yeah. so that's that's what it means to me. Yeah. But if if kids want to think it's Adidas, that's cool. I'm not tripping. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like it a lot. Yeah. 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 I was kind of. What, what, what were your thoughts when you saw? You're like, this dude is crazy. No, I was jealous. I, I would I would have gotten the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it's sick. Shots of the back of people's heads never look good. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it'll always, yeah, that'll always be clean. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I love the symmetry. I love how like direct it is, and like you know. Sometimes it kinda... it's just that, but I love that it has like you have those two meanings, and you can't really go wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and it's also like I needed to over explain to my following like why I was making this switch and how like this was a divine switch in my opinion, not like a hype switch yeah. of like why I'm or clout chasing, you know what I mean? And I, I just really needed to communicate like the levels of like, yo, what this really means to yeah. me yeah. as a person. Like real and, shit. Um, you know, when I found out that the Nike thing wasn't continuing, like, you know, I was hurt up. You oh, know, of I was, course. I was Carl Thomas, I was emotional, yeah. I was light skinned, yeah. just like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I was super light skin, man. I, I was, feel like you've been faced with so many of those, though, like with becoming a father, with like even leaving, you know, the camp, with uh, move, even doing that move. You've been faced with so many, like, oh shit, like this shit's not, not this shit's over. You know what I mean? Because you knew you were gonna keep going. You're relentless, like, but it's just like where you've just fully been tested. I think I'm always trying to like land above opinion. Like, yeah. Like I'm chasing this like. Kenny G approach to design that like if you want to listen to it yeah. it's like really really good yeah if you want to tune it out you you don't have to listen you, you can like to. you can read with it on yeah. you can study you can like be in a conversation and it's still playing yeah. and it's not intrusive yeah and so what I'm chasing is this timeless unintrusive like point of view that like you said can work on anybody and if it wants to be the focal point of the conversation, it's designed in a way that's good enough to be that. Or if you don't want to look at it, it kind of like falls away and it's yeah. not like so intrusive in, yep. into like your visual. And so, um, yeah, man, I'm, 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 land, I'm trying to, and I guess what I'm saying to answer your question and trying to aim for this like Kenny G place is like trying to just land above opinion. Yeah. You know what? Like say what you want, but Kenny G, that's, that's good. Yep. Have yep. your opinion, but the shit is dope. Yeah. Excuse my facts. language. My kids are going to watch this. Oh. But <laughs> it's true. It's dope. It's you true. know what I mean? And so that's where I'm trying to land. It's like, have your opinion. And the reality is I want to make something so good that your opinion says more about who you are than it says about my product. Fire. Yeah. Very well said. Thank you. Hell yeah. <laughs> Damn. On the contrary to that, when you wear something that you don't make, it. And when you make, yeah, no, honestly, yeah, your style is crazy. It, it really makes something like pop. Like you could really kind of make, like, I remember when you were wearing like the Spaghetti Boys uh, uh, merch, which was like amazing because it felt like it was a different world. But when you would wear it, it would go insane. I mean, we were able to go to Japan because of you. Uh, it's not because of me. No, it was because <laughs> of Aaron. But you gave us a huge Asian fan base by wearing our clothes. Uh, I don't, I don't know how to attribute that or like where to attribute. I mean, I think I, I wore the hoodie cause I love you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, I, I it's like, I, 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 I'm trying to always just be like authentically who I am so yeah. that, you know, the, the diet Prada, the whatever, like, like I'm not worried about that. No. You know, I'm staying true to who I am yeah. and I'm wearing things that I feel like fit my aesthetic and the re reality is it's like the spaghetti boys allowed me to like wear these baggy fear of god track pants and still have like an expression that you know juxtaposed with everything else that i was wearing and it fit my aesthetic yeah as yeah, much as i loved you it still fit my aesthetic that's and true I think, that's true um but you were even able to do it with something like the the telethon hoodie uh, where it's like this powdered baby blue like, you know what I mean? It's it's kind of oh, had this that feminine thing, feel, yeah. That thing took off? Huh? That thing took off too? Oh yeah, it took off, but that that was that was on sale before you wore it. But the but you were you you just know how to bring things into your world and make it fit. But I think I thought of something else when I was talking about that. And I saw this other interview where um and of course this opinion has changed by now, but where you said fear of God was kind of made for like this grungy like white kid um who was into all this stuff. Um, and it was interesting because Spaghetti Boys was actually, when we were making it, it was this kind of made up kid in our head that had like green spiky hair. And that was who was like wearing the clothes. Uh, how has that changed now? I think at the time it was like, that, that was me in high school. Like yeah. I was, you know, one of, you know, maybe two black kids on our high school basketball team. Wow. And, you know, we, oh, wow. you know, graduated in 95 and 
we ran out of the tunnel to like Nirvana, Pearl Jam. Yeah. And like I was that kid growing up, yeah, the black yeah. kid that listened to, you know, it wasn't heavy, heavy rock, but it was right. alternative at the yeah. time. And so like, I was not only influenced by that, but there were other things that I was influenced by in my life. And I think maybe at the time of that comment, you know, I'm speaking of myself, like taking the nuances from all these subcultures that I've been a part of throughout my entire life. Yeah, which, whether, which whether has been a lot of them. Yeah, whether they're subcultures or whether it's sports or whether it's my religion, it's like what is what defines fear of God is the ability to bring all of these things in and leave nothing out. Yeah. And then tell a story around it authentically, like who you are. Right. And I think that story can forever and consistently be told because it's like always evolving. Mm -hmm. There's always something else to pull from that um, you've been exposed to or a part of. Yeah. Growing up in a in a suburban neighborhood, how did that help you like kind of do your due diligence or like like when did you start like you know what I mean? Well, I mean, growing, you know, we were we would always go to like a black church on the weekend, right? Uh -huh. So I had like you know my black friends at church on yeah, Sundays, yeah, yeah. and then you know, um, but in terms of like due diligence, I, I wasn't aware that I was doing any due diligence. Yeah, I, was just, yeah. I was just living life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was just like those were also my friends, you know. But yeah. there was this consistent feeling that I just didn't fit. You know, yeah. even at church, I was like, yeah, and I, I, was, I was like the light skinned black kid right. from the suburbs going to the inner city church yeah, and they're yeah, just, yeah. you know, they looking at me crazy and the same white kids on the basketball team looking at me like, you don't fit either. Yep. And I think I've just always pulled from this place of like, just I don't really fit anywhere, um, but I feel like that is the future of our world. You yep. know, my, my, my wife is of, of Spanish descent yeah, um, yeah. and our kids are mixed and, um, I feel like the future of the world is mixed, you know, you know, void, void of all these different subcultures and races and ethnicities. And so what we're trying to do with fear of God is just to pour in all these nuances of the world, you know, and, and, and try and like say one thing and yeah. not a million different things. You know, how do, how do you put all these things in together in one product and, yeah, say, yeah. and say one thing? I love that you say that because I'm the exact opposite. Oh, in, in, in the way that you grew up? Oh, no, no. I'm always trying to say like a million things with one thing. It's, it's, it's very chaotic, opposite oh, yeah. of that. But that you kind of like. And that's still a point of view, though. No, no, I'm saying it's that's, sick. That's, yeah, that's, no, 100 yeah. percent. No, I always think I always would rather that kind of mindset. Um, Some you do always do is uh, give back. And uh, and and make time for that. There was that one time when you were giving um, a lot of fear of God clothes out in downtown LA. Yeah. And I know you had the office out there. Yeah. Um, what was that like? And and you bring your kids too. Yeah, we we did it a couple times. Um, you know, once I remember it was early when I was starting, and we had this Vans collaboration. I had a bunch of people like, I was just super over like anxiety feel with like you know all these celebrity friends asking for shoes and at the same time i'm driving past homeless people every sim day simultaneously yeah you know what i mean and i'm like <laughs> what is the value of this thing yeah you know, what yeah. is the value of this shoe let's right. just like change the value and give these shoes that these people want to people that need something to just cover their foot yeah you know what i mean which is crazy and so um I think I've always just had empathy for the overlooked, the marginalized, the least of these. Yep. But I feel like that just comes with, as the luxury of being, um, being black in America, yeah. is you you, you, have an innate understanding of what other people may be going through. Oh, it happens all the time. I think within this industry too. It's like, I think up until maybe three, two, maybe two years ago, it was just like very much like kind of uh, ignorance is bliss, mm -hmm. kind of, we fight so many battles in this world, so we're kind of just like stuck on that. Yeah. And I think what I, when I was doing the telethon, what I was trying to do was kind of uh, the language of, uh, of, of trying to clash it all together and kind of like n not, not have it be so separate and yeah. kind of open, it, it had opened my eyes to it, you know what I mean? And even more than it was before, I think, yeah. It's definitely a tough, tough balance because you're kind of here for a purpose, and it's to move people with your stuff. But at the same time, you also see how fucked up the world is, and 
yeah. try to do that as well. And you can't go too deep into that side because you still have this mission. Exactly, I but love then, that. It's yeah. like, but then it, it's like bringing it together. It's crazy. Trying to make the time to like bring them together, and, and I'm okay with saying I can't be a philanthropist full time. Yeah, no. But I, I can make time to like go out and do some small things here and there. Um, and we took flack for like recording it, but it's like, yo, if, if I'm gonna post something and I can encourage one person to do something to do good, it, yeah. it's worth a thousand people oh, thinking that there's another yeah. intention there. Yeah. Um, it's really just being, um, no, understanding my calling, understanding why I do what I do, yeah. and allowing that to like, you know, lead in the decision making process of, you know, the final decisions of when and how we execute. Yeah. Earlier this year, it was crazy because um, um, you were able to make this beautiful collection with Zinnia. Yep. Uh, but then COVID happened. Yep. And it kind of fucked up the rollout of it. You were finally able to like make these nice suits like fully. And I imagine you've probably had dreams of making that for like years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, a, a lot of that too is like comes with a lot of education because, you know, where Zinnia stands today is kind of like outside of where culture is, right? Yeah. But growing up, um, you knew that Xenia was, as soon as you got a job, that's the type of suit that you wanted. Oh, wow, you know? okay. And um, they are the oldest and the best tailors in the world. As wow, as I didn't, Luxury yeah, I didn't men's that. tailoring. So that's like the Harvard, like the, that's like the Harvard of like yeah. tailoring and suiting. And so yeah. um, really wanted to um, take that opportunity to learn with the best. Yeah. Um, to put my point of view through like the best um, hands and craftsmanship, yeah, um, to lay the foundation for you know selfishly what I knew we were doing within fear of God for it to be received and respected in a way that wow this guy can have a opinion in the mall and also have yeah. an opinion here yeah and so it's it's been this like constant like you know Damn. fight to be able to express myself honestly. But, um, you know, I had always aspired to, you know, have a Xenia suit. This is like, you know, high school, college. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I love the fact that, like, by the time that we had the opportunity to potentially collab, that culture had no, no idea who they were. And yeah, like, no, been, I had no idea. They've been sitting on Rodeo, they're on Fifth that They're, they're crazy, everywhere, yeah, but yeah. it's like something you just No, I started by. seeing it after I saw uh, your collab. I started seeing the name everywhere. Kind of Aaron taught me a little bit, bit more. She knew about it. Yeah, it's just you know old school, but yeah. it was just like, but I like that like clean palette. One hundred percent. That the proposition is going to be judged by the proposition, not because of the hype of the house. Yeah, <laughs> what's like longevity? Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah, it feeds and, into that. And I felt that working with them versus like another luxury house that may be more relevant would provide a a, a, a cleaner palette for our perspective to be like received. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you feel about the the future of fear of God? Like, do you see yourself at a house? Like, you've never played the 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 show game. You've never had a, a real show, right? No, we, the the only presentation that we did was the one with yeah. with Zania in, in, in Paris. And, oh wow! Um, yeah. And all honesty, man, like I, I don't see myself at a house. Why not? Uh, man, my my family is here. Um, I uh, being home during the pandemic just gave really? me a greater desire to just be here in Los Angeles yeah. and, um, you know, take my girls to horseback riding or take my son to baseball. Um, and I want to build something. Yeah. You know, my desire is, has always been to build fear of God. I, I never, yeah. I wasn't a fashion kid, so I never had an aspiration to like be a part of something or an industry where I never felt wanted anyhow yeah and so it's just not in me to desire to want to to want to be a creative director not to say that people are calling me to be a creative director that's yeah. not the case oh. but it's just not in me my desire is to build fear of god to like you know ralph lauren heights yeah that's what i want to do yeah I be a business owner and you know creative direct my own journey and why why do we as people of color or from streetwear need to feel like we need to be validated yeah, by doing someone something else's like house. that. And so I'm not chasing that validation. And not to say that anyone that has done that is chasing anything. Right. And I think that, you know, 
what Virgil is doing and what Matt is doing at the level that they're doing it. You know, Virgil is carrying his cross oh, that yeah. allows me to carry my own cross here. And yep. it's, in Likewise. some, in some so indirect forth. way, he's yeah. validating what I'm doing by 100%. him doing that. And so he, he does that, so I don't have to do that. Yeah. You know, I'm saying, hold yeah. that, so you don't got to do that. Yeah. So it's like, like, I know what my calling is. I know what I want to say. Yeah. And I think I, I learned a lot from that Xenia um, opportunity in yeah. terms of like the pushback, what you may get from a house. Right, right. And I, I want to say what I want to say. Yep. And I'm not, I don't have the bandwidth to like fight with you on like, my perspective. Yeah. I, I need the freedom to express myself um, how I want to, when I want to. We don't put collections out on the fashion calendar. We put yeah. them out when they're ready. Yep. And so I need the freedom to be able to do that, you know, and that's a part of who we are. And to, to get on that like track and that treadmill is something that is, it's just not attractive at yeah. all. Yeah. No, there's it, enough on the plate. It's just not attractive. Yeah. It's, and it, yeah. Well, it's cool because it's, I feel like when you tell these stories, it's like the childhood dream kind of version of you has kind of gone out. Yeah. And like, this is like a new, like complete outlook. That's like, I don't know. It's cool to hear that. It's just, your interest is more on like continuing to build your own world. Yeah. There's no need for the jumps or the, you know, cause there's enough belief in your future, enough self-belief that you're going to continue to carry this on. Yeah, I think you said it. I think there's a just there's enough like I think my, my wife asked me one day, um, and this was about the knocking off stuff. Yeah. And she's she's like, Why does this bother you so much? Yeah. And and she's like, Do you have any more ideas? And I was like, Yeah, I got a ton of ideas. She's like, So what are you worried about? Yeah. And I was like, Wow. So it, it's exactly it's just the self belief. Yeah. And so yep. whether I'm out here like uncut gems, Adam Sandler <laughs> just like <laughs> Going all these places. Bro, you're like, you're going to kill yourself and drive your company to the ground. Yeah. Or it's like, we're taking it to the next height. But it's like, either way, I'm like betting on myself like every single time. And that's, yeah. that's where I've been able to like find my peace is that yeah. like confidence in um, my own convictions. Yeah. It's interesting you bring up like um, the cool the cool kids table and, and the microscope of that versus like kind of doing it yourself. Because I feel like what Virgil did, um, even up until now, it was a lot of it was positioned so we would have a lot more opportunity. Like I don't think I would I would have Adidas if it wasn't for you know what what he did with with Nike, uh, and then you know tossed down from Kanye. You know what I mean? It's just it is a diagram, but it's it's also crazy how much that same industry can turn on you uh, in like an instant. And we've seen it happen so many times with Virgil and him obviously rise from that. Like, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's interesting, right? Cause it's like, you, you do, you kind of have these like, this respect and boundaries for like what you do and kind of like what the diagram that you're gonna follow because of the, the OGs before you and, and you do it to their respect and, and, and you do it at a pace. Uh, well, you do these things to impress your OGs that you love, right? But it, it's like a, not even bringing in the, OG, the OGs, but like the people you do it to impress who kind of don't want to see you take it up to that level in the first place. Um, but then like, and then, and then also like the kids that, that, that you are doing it for, it's like they could turn on you in any second, but it's like exactly. when you're doing it for everyone, when it's a more world view, it has a longevity. It's kind of like, I don't know. Like, it's sick not to be cool. Like, cool is really fucking stupid and plays out and no one's really fucking with you. And there's a lot of like snakes within that. But it's like when you just do what you do and it's honestly what you're making, no one can say shit. You know what I mean? Or, and if they can, it's not entering your house. Or I don't know if, if that makes sense. It's like, if you think about like TikToks, it's like, um, a lot of people don't want to make a TikTok because it's like hella corny. Uh, but then like someone will go crazy on, on just like making it, not thinking about it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Do you, um, yeah. It's, it's when you stop caring about that, you can almost like propel way more. There's yeah. I mean, I, like, I don't know. Like when I started this show, no one in this scene had like 
something like that. So it was like, oh, am I losing less points, less cool points from the Kerwin Frost catalog to like now be a host of this show telling other people's story while like telling my story as well. Like, you know what I mean? And I feel like for me, when I stopped wanting to even like, you know what I mean? Like you tear down the curtain, there's so much more to offer. Yeah, and I think when you, when you start off and you have aspirations and you have um, people that you're looking up to that you want to be, yeah. that you want to respect what you're doing, yeah. um, it's easy for that respect to become the um, constant validation of, of, um, of your work. Yeah. And you can get caught chasing validation. Validation over a purpose yep. and I'm like chasing purpose yeah I'm like what am I doing that's like that's reframing how my son and my kids and my daughters see the world and and, and reshapes what's possible for their lives yep. you know what I mean yep. and so understanding why I do what I do um, is is really the big thing that that is kind of like the checks and balances yeah. of like what we're putting out yeah. You know, wh wh why are we doing this? And, and honestly, we've just been really just trying to be honest. Like yeah. we're, we're putting out things that we that I would wear. There's nothing that I have put Anybody. out. Maybe I wouldn't wear anymore because I've gotten better as a designer. Right, right, right. And, and because I'm self-taught, I, I learned in front of the world and there's yeah. a lot of designs that maybe I wish I could pull back. Yeah. Um, but I'm, 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 I'm getting to a place where I'm, I'm I'm learning exactly what it is that I want to say. Mm -hmm. And again, like having the resources to say what I want to say. Yeah. And, you know, I just feel like that's why I'm here. I'm not here to fit anywhere. No. I'm, I'm here to show that um, being authentically who you are um, is, is actually the ultimate luxury that we all want to live 100%. in. 100%. You know, yeah. that's, that's the ultimate luxury, yeah. the freedom in being yourself. Mm -hmm. That's luxury, you That's know. Very true. How how can you wear a suit that the proportion is against your body shape, and say that that's luxury and you're uncomfortable? <laughs> you, act, you actually look crazy, dude. Like <laughs> that's not how that's impossible for that to be luxury. Yeah. So, the way that we see luxury is like how are we freeing our consumers up for them to be who they want to be? Yeah. And so that's really, I think, is a thing that we're 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 chasing. Have you ever thought about writing a book? No, I haven't, I haven't thought about it. My, my sisters have brought it up, like, you should do a book. And, yeah. um, I, I feel like I'm still telling a story. Yeah, I feel like I'm still in the middle of a story. Yeah. You know, it's like, I actually feel like it's like chapter one right now. Wow, you know that's what I mean? amazing. It's like, it's like the, pillars are, the pillars are set, it's like go time. Yeah. Now it's like time to like start you know, kind of writing the chapter, so to speak, and so. Um, what when when can we expect the first uh, Adidas drop? You know, I've been fighting internally to say, you know, what we're attempting to do is 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 create some type of a shift. Yeah. Um, not necessarily from one performance brand to the other, but yeah. shifting back. Our core consumer. Well, now you're speaking a new language. This is completely. Yeah, yeah we're, and, and we're developing a new language together yeah. that's going to direct the Adidas and the Fear of God following yep. that maybe they've, you know, are, are buying into other products. Yeah. Um, because we've lost our way, so to speak. Yeah. And how do we get back to where we need to be so that we can tell a long term sustainable story? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not worried about tomorrow I'm thinking about 10 years from now yeah and that takes a little time and so um, it's just kind of like the story Yeah, that's crazy yeah yeah it's like the story of like the, the, the two lights in the middle of the sea and the, yeah. boat, the boat is coming towards the lighthouse and he's like trying to tell the lighthouse to move yeah and the guy next to the captain is like yo that's that's a lighthouse that that doesn't move it tells you where to go Wow <laughs> you know what I mean yeah so it's like why am I here? I, I, I'm convicted that to be some type of a lighthouse within this amazing organization. Yeah. And I'm just working to get the conviction to say, hey, we're, if we're all thinking long term, like, like, like 
let's think long term. And yeah. in order to do that, it's going to take us some time. Yeah, yeah. Um, because once we come out, we're out. Yeah. You know. And so, and our history, and my history as a creative is like we put out things when they're ready. Yeah. So if I did anything against that, you're taking away my core competency yeah. and, and who I am as an individual, yeah. what makes me me. Right. Not to say that I'm just trying to, you know, be creative for the sake of being creative. Um, but I just want us to be able to start and, and come out in a way that that's um, sustainable and gives us the foundation to um, really live out that future vision. Yeah, exactly. That's interesting. Yeah. Because with me, it's, it's uh, uh, with the stuff I'm making, it's it's kind of like uh, all the ideas I didn't get to make before kind of in one place. Mm. So I'm very fresh to the experience. Yeah, so, I think we talked about that offline a little bit too. Yeah, yeah. You know. So for me, it's like kind of like me just taking all these things out of my brain and packaging it. Yeah, yeah. It feels way more intense. But I know that exact feeling of like being able to design with, uh, with longevity. And there's a certain piece to it. But also when you haven't stepped in it before, you have to like completely kind of give it like as much as you can. Yeah, and, and you want to you want to provide a proposition that's worthy yeah. of the opportunity. Yeah, that's like 100%. That's, that's what I felt. Yeah. Like your first opportunity at Adidas is how I felt at Nike. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, oh, wow. Why yeah. am I given? Yeah. Out of all these creatives, I'm yeah. giving the opportunity to design my own silhouette. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and you feel the weight of that responsibility, and so yeah, you're putting it everything into that to like yeah. prove to the world that like you're worthy of this 100%. opportunity. Yeah, you know, and so I know that, I know that feeling, but you know, just find peace in knowing that you know they called you for a reason, man. They want you there for a reason, and you have it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like they have a knack for identifying the individual, mm -hmm. the one that's about who they're about. That's directing. Yeah. You know, you can look at like. From Run DMC all the way up to Ye, all the way back to like, you know, Muhammad Missy. Ali and like it's like Like Missy uh, Elliott. David Beckham, it's like they you know, Missy they ended, you like you like throwing Missy in there. <laughs> it's like Did, the individual. Have you seen her collection? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's it's like the individual yeah. is like, you know, there's Missy is Missy. Yeah. There's that's not a it's not a derivative of anything else. Yeah. You know, Kerwin that's very is true. Kerwin, like it's not a derivative, you know, Jerry's Jerry, yay is yay, and it's just like, yeah. I think they have a knack for really identifying like who the um, individuals that are authentically themselves are in the space. Yeah. Missy, Missy, what kind of music you been listening to, man? Me? Yeah. Um, you're, all, you're all over the place. It's very all over the place. Yeah. But, um. I didn't mean to mess up your train of thought with the question, I was just, yeah, it's very all over the place. I, Missy I, had me thinking about music. I was just like, oh. Yeah. Well, her collection was sick to me because it was a lot of, like, just the height of, like, hood fab. Mm -hmm. Like, really high Adidas sneakers. And, like, like they were making, like, the puffer jackets, like, the crown with M.E., Respect Me, mm -hmm. Missy Elliott, um, June Ambrose. Um, OG. Yeah. So, More OGs. Yeah, with me, my connection with Adidas was kind of like Run DMC, Missy Elliott, Jeremy, of course. Oh, yeah. And then, like, yeah, yeah, that was kind of mostly it for me, honestly. That stuff was, like, really, like, in your face. Yeah, it was fully loaded. Yeah, It was, yeah, like, yeah. fully expression. Yeah. Yeah. But authentically unique to the respective person. I'm not sure. Is there anyone you would want to work with? You know what, man? There used to be. I used not to like anymore. want. I used to want like certain models. I'm yeah. like, yo, and then no. we get bad rates. And um, I've I'm at a point now where I work with the people that want to work with me. Yeah. Because I know the outcome is always going to be better because they want to be there. Yeah. You know, this so is at the same time, the same point of view when I'm like hiring. You know, I may take someone with a little bit less talent. Yeah. But I know that this is where they feel they want to be. Oh, really? So you go for less talent? I go for people that want to be, that, that have bought into what the, what the vision is. 100%. Yeah. Because I believe if you believe in something, 
it's way more valuable than someone who's like more knowledgeable. Knowledgeable or talent, you know, you know. Because so, you can feel the heart through the through the work. Exactly, and really, I'm trying to like inspire like the kid that never thought he could be an architect. Right, right, right. I'm trying right. to inspire the kid that, um, you know, because I grew up thinking my only chance in life was through baseball because my dad was in baseball. No, that's insane. And it's so insane. I thought that that's what No, I there was so do. many taboos to your story. Yeah. Like just you being separated, you being in a sports family, you even being a promoter. You know what I mean? Like how the fuck? Like, you know, what I mean? that <laughs> shit's crazy. And it all informs what, you know, my mom was like, my mom even asked me, she's like, yo, like, it's so crazy this happened overnight. I'm like, mom, this is not overnight. <laughs> you realize all, that I, all the jobs, everything yeah. that I've done, like yeah, all yeah. that is informing yeah. the collection. 100%. And so I'm able to market. I worked in sports marketing. I'm able yeah. to understand the business side. Yeah. I'm able to like understand it's influencers. Crazy. I've been throwing parties. Like I understand culture. Like, yeah. Mom, this is informed by everything I've been doing. It's just manifesting through clothing. Yeah. It's not like an overnight thing. No, you kill yourself every day for thing. this. My mom, I was like, come on, mom. You got everybody should know it's not overnight. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Jerry, thank you so much for coming on my show. Thanks for having me, man. You know, I've been looking forward to it. Oh, I sorry. God, I love you. Love you too, man. Oh my god, we're so hot. Yeah, it's appreciate fucking it. hot in this plane. Ready to hop out? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it.